Hey everybody, welcome to JSD TV. On this week's episode, I want to give you an update on my Ponty Knit Jean pattern and where it is. I also have some feedback from some of the pattern testers, which I'm really excited to share with you. Um, and then for a tip to go along with that, I'm going to show you how to get pattern pieces ready to cut out a fit muslin. Now, if you're working on a jean pattern or a pants pattern that has a front pocket, um, you want to be able to cut your muslin out accurately without having that opening in the front, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and before we get started with that, I want to just talk a little bit about my new love of knitting. Um, I don't know if you noticed a couple weekends ago on Facebook, I was at the Craftsy Instructor Summit, and one of the things that immediately caught my eye was all the beautiful knitting projects that the knitters brought with them. Um, it was very, very cool. There was a knitting lounge set up, and I was totally fascinated by the fact that you could bring your project with you. You know, I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to bring, like, if I wanted to work, I'd have to bring my paper, my rulers, um, you know, or my sewing machine to do the things that I do. And I was a little bit jealous, actually, that the knitters could just bring their project with them, their yarn, their work on knitting needles, and they could pull it out and work while they were listening to the presentations or while they were on a break. And I really found that, like, um, I was so attracted to it. So I met a bunch of knitters too. And one of the knitters I met, uh, Laura, Laura Lee Beltman, she teaches a class called Continental Knitting on Craftsy. So I decided that I was going to sign up for it and start taking it. Now, this is exciting for me in a couple different ways. First of all, I've never taken an online class myself. So I can almost experience the whole online video class um, from the eyes of a student now and a student who really knows nothing about the topic. So basically, I'm a beginner knitter um, taking this class. So I'm, you know, I'm really, really excited to try it. I, um, you know, my grandmother actually taught me how to knit when I was really little and she was what they call a thrower. So like your yarn is in your right hand and you're, and when you hold your needles, um, you know, you, you have the yarn in your right hand and you make the stitches that way. Well, continental knitting, your, your yarn is in your left hand and you hold the needles differently and it's supposed to be quicker and faster. Um, nothing is quick and fast for me at the moment. You can see my knitting thus far. I mean, I just started the class and I've watched lesson one on how to knit my knit stitch. You can see it's not even. I've made mistakes. I've dropped stitches and I've tried to pick them up. But I really, I think that knitting is going to be a really good addition to my J Stern design life because it gives me time to really think and process problem solving on things I'm working on. So like if I'm working on my Ponty Knit Jeans, I was having a, um, a big discussion with one of my um, testers about fitting and measurements and measurement charts. And I had it all straight in my mind while I was, you know, talking with her. And then I put that down and moved on and I went to then work on the computer and sort of make some of the changes we talked about and I totally couldn't remember nothing made sense to me so I got my knitting out and I started stitching along and it allowed me to think you know and just it gave me you know I spent like 10 minutes just knitting and it was funny I was able to like I don't know clear my mind and get back going with the pattern so I think it's going to be you know help my creativity plus you know, when I do finally finish my day and I'm sitting there watching TV, I can knit while I'm watching TV now, so I won't feel like I'm wasting that hour or hour and a half that I was spending in front of the TV just watching TV. So I think it'll actually have a space, you know, I think there's space in my schedule for it where I'm not sacrificing um, time or I won't be able to fit it in and not do it because I have like built-in pockets of time where I could pick up my knitting and work on it. So I'm really kind of excited about it. And in the distant future, in the back of my head, I've always had these ideas of um, combining knitting with knit garments, too. So, you know, in the same garment. So my whole idea on this is I'm going to take this craftsy class. It's called um, Continental Knitting, and I'll put a link to it um, in the blog post that goes along with this. Um, 
I'm gonna take the whole class. I'm gonna try everything. I'm gonna practice my knit until I can make a uniform nice stitch. And then I'm gonna move on to purl. And then there are some fancy stitches in there, like there are cable. Um, there's a lesson on cables and other fun things like that. And I'm just gonna take the whole class and I'm gonna experience it as I would imagine the students who take my classes experience it. And I think that might even make me a better online teacher. I'm really excited. So, um, after I do that, I'm going to knit a sweater. And this yarn is yarn that um, one of my very good friends who passed away a few years ago um, was trying to knit a sweater when he was in rehab. And, you know, he was always looking for things to do. And before he was in the rehab, he made amazing sweaters. Like he could look at a sweater um, in a store and basically copy it without a pattern. He was so talented. And then, you know, as he spent more and more time in the rehab and things weren't going well, he wanted to try to make a sweater. And it was actually kind of heartbreaking because I went to the yarn store. I I got him this yarn. I got him knitting needles. Um, I got him stitch counters, you know, all the things he needed. And, you know, every time I'd come and visit him, I would notice that he would knit a little and then he would take it out and he would knit a little and he would take it out and he never really got to knitting that last sweater so this yarn is actually very dear to me so I'm going to practice with it and then I'm going to knit a special sweater for myself to rem you know in memory of him I guess um, because he was very special to me and I'm sorry um, he was very special to me and I think that that'll be a nice um, way to remember him and you know, so this yarn is special to me too. So, you know, I just wanted to share that with you because you, know, you get so caught up in your sewing and in your drafting and in your, the things that you do, sometimes you don't think outside the box. So I feel like I have this rejuvenation and I'm going to try this new craft and I've found a way to fit it into my schedule and I'm really excited. So I will keep you updated on that as I go along. Okay, not very impressive right now, but I promise you I will get better. So look for the link in my blog post on continental knitting. Um, I can tell you that Lori Lee is an excellent instructor because I've already enjoyed listening to her very calm um, manner teach me how to do this. So if she can teach me how to do it, she can teach anybody. But anyway, so that's my knitting, my little knitting story. Um, all right, so now I want to talk about um, Ponty Knit Jeans and... I'm really excited because I got an email from one of my um, testers last night and it was like, you know, like you open your email in the morning and you read something that just makes your whole day wonderful. Well, I want to just read something to you. I have to find it. Um, let me see. Okay, so um, Ruth emailed me and she said, Jennifer, the pattern was a pleasure to put together. I have some nitpicky notes for your consideration. And then she continued to um, list all of the different things. A lot of them had to do with labeling and markings on the actual pattern pieces. And then she had a few, um, a few instructions, um, things that happened with the instructions. Um, and she did such a, um, you know, she was so thoughtful with her um, comments and her, the things that she noticed, I really, you know, I was, I'm so grateful. So Ruth, thank you so much. And thank you for starting my day so wonderfully that I, you know, I was so happy to hear that the pattern was a pleasure to work with. You know, I just, that made me happy. Um, another pattern tester that I'm working with, Becky, she's in between sizes. So she actually took the time, she went above and beyond the call of duty, and she actually tried both patterns. And that was so valuable for me to experience because I got to see how the size, the sizes fit, you know, on the same body. Like, so the women's and the misses, because the lower sizes in the women's really are not plus sizes. They're just a fuller pattern through the hips and thighs. And the misses is very fitted through the hips and thighs. So it was just interesting to see, um, how each pattern fit one person. So I really gained so much information on that. So I have to give Becky a gold star because she really, um, 
did an, went way about, above what I expected or even thought anyone would, would take the time to do. So thank you so much for that. Um, now, I think based on the feedback I'm getting, I should be able to have this pattern finished in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so I have some a, a few fine tuning things to do. I'm gonna revamp the instructions based on the comments I got from my testers, and then I'm gonna publish it. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I am going to, there'll be a special sale on the pattern for members of my J Stern Design Pattern and Fitting Perfection group. So if you haven't joined that group yet, I recommend joining it because I'm gonna start putting my patterns on sale. I can't believe I haven't done that yet. Um, it never occurred to me to put my patterns on sale, so I'm sorry for everyone who has bought and supported me without me giving love back like that. Um, but I'm gonna start doing sales and other fun things and contests and all this other stuff. So um, that closed group is gonna be the place where I'm gonna do it because I'm hoping to foster this wonderful, inspiring um, group where we all share our photos of how garments are coming out and also photos of things that people need help with in terms of fitting. So um, that's gonna be coming. So I'm really excited about that. Um, all right, so now for the... Um, um, tip portion of today's episode. What I'd like to do is just show you the leg pattern pieces and explain why you sort of have to um, do a little bit of um, a work to them before you can cut out a fit muslin. So if you're planning on making a sample that you're going to use to fit, that's what I consider a fit muslin, let me show you how to do that. So first, um, these are my pieces and this is the, um, the front pocket. Notice it's a one piece facing and pocket bag and it, it folds up like this, you know, when it's completed. And you need the pocket piece to get the front leg ready. So what you wanna do is you wanna trace the size of that you're working with in your pocket bag. So you need a traced version of that. And then you're also gonna to need to trace your front leg. And notice this is my whole graded nest. And I think last week or the week before I talked about not doing pattern adjustments through a graded nest because it ends up looking funky and wonky. And I just wanna show you, I have worked all week. I have cut out all of my fit muslins for my class that I'm gonna be teaching, my new Ponte Knit Jean Fit Workshop. And it, would, it takes a long time and every size I made, I had to figure out how to um, finish the waistline edge across the front pocket opening. So what I would do is I would use the front pocket piece, line it up along the, the zipper seam allowance and the front edge here, and then just trace in where the actual jeans are gonna be when the pocket's constructed. That way when you do all your adjustments, you'll know that it's gonna fit right. So I just wanna point out to you, look at how funny this looks because I cut through all the sizes. So again, I'm gonna take my own advice and I'm gonna show you how to do it on a traced pattern. Okay, so here's um, a traced front leg and here is a traced pocket. Now, to make it easy for you to see on camera, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get out my light table so I can put it on there and show you um, how to put this together and finish the leg. So let me just grab my light table. I have it right under the table. It's big. All right, I've got my light table in front of me and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this pattern piece upside down because this is the edge that is the zipper seam allowance and the waistline edge when it's folded up. So for example, see what happens when I fold this up. Um, see how you can see how it finishes the waistline edge. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this edge to finish the top of the front leg. So I'm just gonna leave it turned upside down like this. And then I'm going to line up my um, zipper seam allowance. Okay, and I'm gonna line up my neck, my waistline edge like this. And then basically what I can do is I can just trace in the, um, the rest of my waistline. 
if I can find a pencil, I'll just use this pen. All right, so basically, see how it's gonna be the same over here? And I'm just gonna go like this very gradually. Like this. All right, I'm just gonna make a little bracket like that. Then I can take a ruler and just finish this like this nice and neat. All right, so now when I cut out my fit muslin, I'm gonna cut along this line and I'm sure to know that when I'm done fitting my pattern and then I go back to, um, you know, I can go back and I can add in this little wedge, which is the ease for the your hand if you're using your front pocket. So see how the front leg sticks out like that? It's a little bit wider. That's because there's there's a little bit of ease so you can put your hand in there. So um, after you fit your muslin, then what you would do is you would just go back to a fresh copy and you would just trace that little bit in. And basically at the bottom of the pocket bag, they're the same. Okay, so it's just this little wedge that comes out in the front leg that um, gets added back on. But you don't want to include it when you're fitting because it's really not part of the width of your jean. It's just a little bit of extra room in the front pocket. So if you have any questions about that, please, you know, let me know. You can post them below or you can visit my blog and post a comment there and I'll, I'll help you. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to make sure I'm doing when I'm doing these videos is sort of to support students who have taken my classes in the past. So I'm really trying to give you bits of information and things that you may have missed during a hands-on workshop because I want you to be able to use the information you got. So if you've taken one of my hands-on workshops and you're not sure how to do something, please email me um, your questions and I will include those in my quick tip or you know, JSD TV topics because the whole reason why I love to teach is to teach people to do things. And sometimes when you're in a classroom setting, so much information is whizzing around, it's hard to remember. But anyway, so this is, you know, the start of the class where you'd actually make a fit muslin. Um, and this would be the most accurate way to do it. I also, in class, will use a French curve and sort of finish it and sort of eyeball and guess. But if you want it spot on using the pocket bag pattern piece, is the perfect way to do it because that's the part that finishes that part of the waistband in your constructed jeans. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, on Thursday, for Quick Tip Thursday, I'm gonna show you um, an easy way to get excellent top stitching results with no fuss on uh, ponty knit fabric. Because if you remember from my first pair of jeans, I was not happy with my top stitching. And, you know, I want these jeans to look authentic and fabulous. So excellent top stitching has to be one of the features. So join me Thursday for um, a quick tip showing how to um, get good top stitching results on ponty knit fabric. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you Thursday.